I see things that the majority of people don't see at all. If you want to track someone down. There's a track right there. Retired park ranger Dwight McCarter is the man you want hot on their trail. And it looks like he's right-legged and a pretty good stride sends a flag to you there. This nationally renowned man tracker has found fugitives. Here it is, right here. Missing aircraft and small children in the Smokies. Enough tales to fill a book, which he did. And that little boy got lost just off to the, to the right of that day. But in a career that's a chronicle of success, the chapter that still stands out is a story with a beginning, a middle, but no end, even after 45 years. Dennis Martin, on June the 14th, 69, disappeared off the face of the earth, never to be found. On Father's Day weekend, 1969, six-year-old Dennis Martin camped out with his dad, his grandfather, his older brother, and some other kids up at Spence Field. And at around 4.30 in the afternoon, the boys huddled up, planned a playful prank on their parents, and then split up. They were going to sneak up and scare their family. The older boys jumped out of the woods and booed the family and had a lot of fun. And when it come time for Dennis to show up and scare the family, he never showed up. It had only been three minutes since they saw Dennis, but his father started looking for him. They hollered for him. The problem at Spence Field that there seems to be an incessant wind comes out of Tennessee and whips over the mountain and it's a that wind drowns it out. And as darkness started to fall, so did the rain in buckets. Two and a half inches in one night. And the storm was so vicious. And you can imagine what the little boy was going through. Where was he? What, where could he be? The next day, crews started searching the trails and the swollen creeks. Special forces were in the area doing exercises, so Green Berets, with experience fighting in the jungles of Vietnam, were suddenly on hand to help search the rugged forest. The surge area has expanded as the days stretch into a full week since the youngster was reported missing. But the rain kept coming. Another three inches, more flash floods, all washing away any clues and making roads way too muddy to travel. Crowds and crowds of people showed up to help, eventually growing to 1,400 people at one time, scouring the Smokies for any sign of Dennis. But any clues not washed away by the rain were now drowning in the flood of good-hearted people. If you got 1,400 people, they've stomped on everything. It just don't work. At that point, the search dogs cannot sniff out any clues trampled by a 1,000 people, so the search dragged on. Was Dennis attacked by an animal, washed downstream, kidnapped? Infinite theories and leads, none of them leading to Dennis. And with the Great Smoky Mountains being the most visited national park in the entire country, you would think if Dennis Martin died here, someone would come across something, be it remains or a piece of clothing over the course of 45 years. But actually, with each passing season, Mother Nature buries the secrets of the national park deeper and deeper. For every year, the forest layers up one half to one inch of debris. So this is 45 years, 45 inches underneath the earth. All the notes on the Dennis Martin search. Crews learned a lot of lessons the hard way during the Dennis Martin search. And the Smoky Search and Rescue Coordinator, Steve Kloster, says those lessons have been taught ever since. In that search operations class on day one, what they do is really review the Dennis Martin search. Very good intentions, but you had hundreds and hundreds of people showing up and they had no training. It changed forever the way we search. The entire nation put a big emphasis on training researching life-saving procedures for exactly when and how to search for missing people. From the failure of one, you learn how to get better, and I think we get better in life, you know. So whatever happened to Dennis Martin? It's a question with no answer, a story with no ending. But the narrative is clear in the mind of Dwight McCarter. For the searchers and the, the rangers and the family, it's not your fault. 
It's not your fault. Not finding him. You did the best you could with the resources that you had. It, it's not your fault. In the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, Jim Matheny, WBIR 10 News.